Hello, I'm Cowboy Bootmaker Lisa Sorrell, and this week I want to talk to you about some of my memories of the old bootmakers, specifically my old mentor, Jay Griffith. Jay was a grumpy old alcoholic, and I was an innocent church-going girl when I first got my job with him. I had never been around anyone who cussed or drank, so we made quite a pair. Jay would have been born around 1918, and those old bootmakers were tough. Jay was raised by his grandparents, and he always told me that his grandma didn't want him to become a bootmaker. She told him that the old bootmakers were all old alcoholics, and he always told that story with pride, as if he had proven a point, and that usually confused me. There was an old bootmaker in Jay's town, and Jay knew from the time he was a kid that he wanted to become a bootmaker. When he got the chance, he'd hike into town. I don't know how far it was, but it sounded like it was a few miles. He had hiked into town to try to watch this old bootmaker building boots and learn something. The old bootmaker was also a violin maker, and Jay said that as soon as he walked in the door, if the old bootmaker was making boots, he would lay them down and pick up a violin and start working on the violin. The old guy didn't want Jay to learn anything about cowboy boot making from him. Jay must have learned something though, because he claimed to have made his first pair of boots when he was 13 years old. His only tools were a hammer and a fork that he had shaped into an awl. Now don't get me wrong, even though Jay was certainly a challenge to work for, I am so proud that I got to know him and I got to learn from him. He was incredibly talented and it was an experience I'll never forget. One of the coolest things that I ever saw when I worked in Jay's shop, he had this old pair of boots there. The story behind these boots was that he made them for his second wife while they were going together and they were too tight so he tore them down to relast them and in the meantime they married had three kids and divorced and the boots were never finished when I first saw those boots it was a revelation to me that footwear could be so beautiful and so intricate and colorful I had never worn cowboy boots before I got a job in Jay's shop I had never heard of a custom boot maker but as soon as I saw those boots I knew I'd found what I wanted to do for the rest of my life and if I could have, one of my dearest wishes would be to find those boots. I don't know whatever happened to them, and if I could own those boots, it would make me incredibly happy, but I have no idea whatever happened to them. I'm gonna share one other old bootmaker story. This comes from a friend of mine. His name is Dave. Dave trained with Ted Trulove down at Texas Tech, I think in the 1960s, I'm not sure about that, but I guess Ted Trulove was another old bootmaker similar to Jay Griffith. And Dave said that when he first came into the shop to learn to build boots, Ted only let him build one boot. Not a pair, but only one boot. And after Dave finished it, Ted took it away from him and hid it in a closet and said, now build the other one. Now I'm here to tell you that that's not even possible. When you build a pair of cowboy boots, at every point you're comparing them. Do the toes look the same? Do the heels look the same? Are they balanced the same? No matter what you're doing, you have to do it twice. So to build one without being able to see the first one is absolutely impossible, but it certainly would have been a good lesson, and it would have taught Dave always from then on to compare his boots and make sure that they look the same. I hope you enjoyed my memories of the old-time bootmakers. Thank you, and see you next week.